What's up guys, Taylor back at it again for the Teacher T Anatomy 3 channel. Um, today we're going to cover more structures of the integumentary system, specifically the majority of the structures that lie within the dermis. Um, so the first thing I want you to realize is the two layers um, within the dermis, the distinction between the two. So if you're looking at the model, okay, last time we talked about the layers of the epidermis, okay, the basal lamina that connects the layers of the epidermis to the top part of the dermis. So this top part of the dermis right here is the papillary region or layer of the dermis. So the papillary region or layer. Okay, and you can also see it right along here, okay, connecting to the basal lamina. So you see it reaching up, kind of like lacing with the basal lamina, kind of like that. Okay, so you see the papillary reaching up and the basal lamina kind of connecting with it like glue, okay? Then the majority of the dermis you can see right here is the reticular layer, so it's the flat portion of the dermis, okay? So then all the accessory structures within, okay? So the first structure we cover is just this red vessel right here. This is the artery, okay? The second structure right here, the blue vessel right here, is the vein, and then as we push our way to the surface right here, this network of nerves connecting at the junction between the papillary and reticular layers of the dermis, this is going to be your papillary plexus. Papillary plexus. Nerves are going to be these yellow lines. So here's a nerve right here. Tactile or Meissner corpuscles are going to be these red cherry-like structures. They're responsible for light touch sensation. And so they sit near the surface, closer to the surface for light touch sensation stuff. Um, lamellated or piscinian corpuscles are going to sit further away from the surface or deeper. And they kind of look like watermelons right there. You can see one right here. You can also see another good one over here. Um, Ruffini corpuscles are kind of weird. They look like uh, kidney beans. So you see a couple over here, Ruffini corpuscles. Pore of sweat gland, that's kind of just a weird term, but it's the opening of any of these sweat glands we talk about. So here's an opening of one. That's a white sweat gland we'll talk about in a little bit. Here's another pore of sweat gland opening to this green one. And another white one over here, pore of sweat gland opening at the surface. So what are those two different sweat glands? Um, this large green one right here, this smelly looking green one that activates during puberty. This is the apocrine or apocrine sweat gland. And then this white one right here is the merocrine sweat gland. You can also see another one right here, but it's cut or sliced in half. So you see the full version right here of the merocrine sweat gland. And then you see the sliced in half version right there, merocrine sweat gland. And then the last term we're going to cover for this section is the sebaceous gland. And that's not a sweat gland. It's the sebaceous gland. It's purple, and it is always anchored or attached to a hair. It secretes an oily substance called sebum, which helps keep your skin from drying out and cracking and um, just helps you out. So that's it for this section. So signing out, and good luck.